Hello, hello, and welcome back to the channel. As most of you know, I'm Topher. And for those of you who don't know and just randomly decided to click on my video, welcome to the channel. I'm Topher. Thank you for stopping by. So we're here to do a reaction, and we're diving back into some more of my queen, my goddess, the end all, be all, the one and only Miss Kelly Clarkson, and some more of her Kelly Oki segments. And I am super duper excited because, well, I was already planning on doing Kelly Oki reaction today, but then I just Googled Kelly Oki to see what was happening and see what new ones came out in the last few days or last week or so. And there were so many amazing ones that I had to add to my playlist. So I'm going to have to do like two Kelly Oki reaction sessions. I'm super duper excited. Um, so the first one we're going to dive into right now is one that you guys have been asking me to do for a little while. Um, so I've had this sitting in my playlist for a little bit now. Um, and it is her covering Crazy by Aerosmith. Um, Kelly and Aerosmith just go together like peanut butter and jelly like I just I, I love her anytime she embraces that super savage rock element to her voice and when she takes on Aerosmith just uh, her doing dream almost everything um I remember back in the day when she did um crying which I think she also covered again on Kelly Oki too I feel like I reacted to that too like I just I love her doing Aerosmith so we're gonna dive into this and see what she does with this this other classic Gorgeous placement in her voice. Good. Sing, Mama. Mama, mama, first song out the gate and we got the fan already, mama. I swear to God, this woman, this woman, this woman is so insanely talented. It is remarkable how talented she is. Like, yes, when it first started, it was, like I said, I love where it sat in her voice. I thought it did magically delicious things with the tone of her voice. Um, her vibrato just kind of lingered there at the end of these phrases. And yeah, it had this sort of bluesy element you know you know she's got that soulful bluesy quality to her voice um so i love when she embraces her bluesy rocker um so yeah it had this very blues rock kind of vibe to it and yeah the caption even said when it started country music um instrumentally it has a sort of country vibe to it which we know kelly can slay her some country music she's a good old texan girl we know this um so all these elements just add up together and just make sense they just make sense for kelly's voice so when she got to the chorus and i go crazy crazy like just how open and free that belt was on the crazy because that was a, a nice good upper chest belt and it's like just how open and free it was just oh it just sounded so beautiful so beautifully placed and then we got there towards like not really the end but maybe like 30 seconds before we got to the end of the uh, performance when she just started belting up into the stratosphere i'm like girl girl slay my life like i don't feel like i've whipped out a fan for kelly Oki in a while and there have been some amazing kelly Oki performances don't get me wrong i've watched some amazing ass kelly Oki performances i just don't always have my fan nearby and you know sometimes i don't think about it but like that just made me whoo yes queen yes yes Ugh. 
a lift, 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 lift. So this is just a start. This is just track number one. And I feel like this is going to be a very hard ranking that I'm going to have at the end of this karaoke segment because there are so many good songs. So many good songs. Ugh. All right. So next we're going to dive into her covering Don't Dream It's Over, um, which is honestly one of my favorite songs. Like I first learned the song through Sixpence None the Richer, what their cover of the song. And I didn't realize it was a cover of the song until I was an adult. And then I heard the original version. I was like, oh, hey, this is pretty cool. I like this. Um, I was like, why does this sound familiar? And I'm like, oh my God, I know this song. Like, I love this song. I love the lyrics in the song. I just love the mellow vibe of the song. Like, it's just, it's just one of my favorite songs. And it's not something that I would have thought Kelly would have sung, but honestly, it doesn't surprise me. It feels like something that is in Kelly's wheelhouse, and it's just not a song that would be the first thing I would jump to, like, oh, Kelly needs to sing this, but it is something that I, when I found out Kelly sang it, that I needed it in my life. So we're going to jump into this and see what she does with it. Hello, background singer. How you doing? Hey now, background singer. Hey now. Is this the full song? No? Okay, we're getting two verses and two choruses? Okay. Transition's beautiful. In the war between us Yes, mama Okay, so yeah, that was pretty much what I was expecting Like, that's like the baseline of what I was expecting A very chill kind of performance Not like, you know, super big vocal showcase It's not that kind of song It is very lyrically driven, chill kind of vibe um, in both versions, in both the original Crowded House version and the Sixpence None of the Richer versions. It's just very chill all the way through. Um, so she could have, you know, taken it up and done all these other kinds of things with it, but it really didn't need to. It didn't need it. Would it have sounded fantastic? Sure. But it, it didn't need it. It was very much a chill kind of vibe. Um, and yeah, I think she did a good job. I liked, I liked, I'm noticing a lot of different background vocalists in her karaoke segments recently this season. Um, so I like that um, she's switching it up. And I mean, I love the background vocalist she's had in the past. She's always has amazing background vocalists. But I love that she has like this sort of like rotating pool of background vocalists. Kind of reminds me of like, not six months. Um, Scott Bradley and Postmodern Jukebox, how they have like this rotating pool of like musicians and singers that come in and do all these covers and whatnot. I like that she has like this pool of background singers that like, you know, okay, you can take a break, you can take, you can have a couple days off, blah, 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 blah. We've just got this pool of just amazing talent who's always gonna be here to back her up. So like, it's nice to see all these different faces here, all these different voices blend together and whatnot. So yeah, all in all, it was a good performance. Is it the most mind-blowingly amazing karaoke performance we've ever seen? No but it was a good performance. It was a good, solid cover. She sounded good, she looked amazing. Transitions up into her head voice were beautiful, easy, just easy breezy kind of performance. All right, so next we're gonna get into one that I'm super excited about that I didn't know happened until I just typed in karaoke earlier today and added it to my playlist immediate, immediately. Um, and she is covering Sarah McLaughlin's song, Adia. I love 
this song. I love Sarah McLaughlin's voice. Um, I think the only Sarah McLaughlin song I've heard Kelly cover was Angel, and I don't know that I actually heard, I've heard her do it live. I like she had like a demo recorded way back before she was on American Idol and whatnot. There were a couple of demos that she had cut. She cut Angel. I think she had Queen of the Night by Whitney Houston and a couple others that, you know, me being the hardcore Kelly Clarkson fan that I was, scourged the inter you know, scoured the internet and, you know, got the tracks. So I've had them on my, you know, playlist ever since. Um, but yeah, I don't know that I've actually heard her sing it live. I don't know that I've heard her sing Ameri or, um, Sarah McLaughlin live yet. So I'm excited about this. I love this song. I, I, I love the tone of Sarah's voice. I'm very, very excited to see what Kelly does with it. So let's dive on in and find out. on bottom note. Don't you know I tried so hard to love you in my way? It's easy, let it go. Mm, beautiful. Beautiful lows. I am so sad. I'm so sad that only one verse and one chorus fit into a minute and 44 seconds. Where like with Don't Dream It's Over, we got two verses and two choruses that fit into the same time frame. Like it makes me so sad because like this song is so beautiful and Kelly's voice on the song is so beautiful that I wanted more like just about every other Kelly Oki performance I react to I want the full length version um yeah gorgeous gorgeous just the gentle head voice this this beautiful switches into in and out of her head voice um the points there when um where the lyrics are Love you in your way, it's easy, let it go. Like, I can't remember exactly a port, but there's one point there where it's like, it might have been the love you in your way. Let me, let me go back and listen. We go, we gonna go back. I don't think I went back far enough. No. Okay, yeah, let's we'll let it go. It's easy, let it go. Like where it was placed. Like it's, I don't really know how I want to explain it, but it, like it wasn't 
like a full falsetto it felt like a little bit more chord closure so it felt like like a very light mixed voice like it wasn't quite a belt and it wasn't quite a falsetto but it was like somewhere in the middle this very light mix that was just beautiful 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 there's just so many beautiful moments in the song so many beautiful vocal moments um the lows gorgeous rich well supported the highs light effortless beautiful like it's just sarah mclaughlin just has that ethereal magic to her voice where everything just feels like this ethereal atmospheric kind of vibe and like i just love that vibe for kelly um one of my favorite songs from kelly was off of breakaway album where is your heart um and like the first time i heard that i was back in college and every every time i hear that song like i always associate it with like a sarah mclaughlin vibe it's not exactly sarah mclaughlin but it gives me that sort same sort of um soft delicate breathy atmospheric vibe from the vocal delivery that she gives i just love 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 that song so so much so i love kelly in the sarah mclaughlin realm it's just beautiful 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 oh love it i wish i wish it were longer all right, so the last one that we're gonna get into, I am super excited about. I also did not know that this existed until I looked up Kellyoki today, and y'all, I'm upset that nobody told me about this, because y'all, I put out a poll a couple months ago on the community tab of my channel asking me, or asking you guys to give me three categories for Kelly Clarkson songs, to give me your top three or five or whatever album tracks, because I'm working on top 10 lists, which I need to get back to. Um, top 10, you know, or top three, your top three Kelly, o Kelly Clark, yeah, worse, top three Kelly Clarkson album tracks, um, your top three Kelly Clarkson performances, or songs that haven't been performed live, and then top three um, performances that you feel like any Kelly Clarkson fan needs to have seen. Um, so I could compile my top 10 list, which again, I need to get back to. But one of the songs that was on high up on the list for um, the song that inspired the list um, for songs that had never been performed live was her song, Someone, because I remember being, just listening to it come up on my shuffle and I remember like, oh my god, I love this song. And I think it was my favorite song off the Piece by Piece album. And I started Googling, like, is there a live version of it? And I asked someone on, um, I asked on um, Twitter and people were like, no, she hasn't done it live. And I was like, oh man. So that inspired that whole list. And now I'm going to have to take that song off the list because she performed it live on Kellyoki. And y'all, I'm like, I'm so upset. No Nobody told me about this because there, it spawned a whole freaking list. It spawned a whole freaking top ten list that now I gotta take the track off of. Um, so like, yeah, why don't y'all tell me? So she's performing her own song, someone, and I'm super duper excited. So we're gonna just dive into this and just fangirl. I love this dress. I 
Wish I didn't really mean. I'm sorry, I'm not sorry. <sighs> Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. Ah, oh, I love, 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 love this. Ah, oh, she sounded gorgeous. Ah, oh, yes, we had to wait like a decade or something to have it sung live, but I'm so glad it happened. Cause like, I don't know if she sang it on the Piece by Piece tour. I don't know because Piece by Piece tour was the only concert of hers that I actually had tickets for and I was super duper excited and she had to end up canceling the tour like three stops before she got to my city because she needed to go on vocal rest or something. I don't remember what it was but I was so upset because I'm like, ah, that's the first Kelly Clarkson concert I actually have tickets to and I, ah, I'm so upset. So I don't know if she ever sang it live but whenever I, whenever I put out that poll or whatever, the song was mentioned a lot so I'm gonna assume she didn't sing it during that, that tour. Um, but yes, God gorgeous like i love the song for so many reasons but like lyrically well i mean it was the first time on a recorded track that i heard her swear um because she's she's always just been happy go lucky you know yeah girl power and all that kind of stuff but like she's been kind of you know like clean clean like yes we know that she she can swear and all that kind of stuff in real life and whatnot but like musically like she, it's always been very very clean so it was the first time i ever heard her like use a curse word i'm like oh 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 Oh, Kelly mean business, Lord. Um, but yeah, just the story the lyrics tell, it was very relatable to me at the time. And it's very much one of those songs where it's like, obviously it's not a happy ending to whatever romance that they had, but you can still see that even though the protagonist or the person singing the song is upset at the person the other person you know they're upset at them at the things they did and they're they're frustrated and you know there's all these signs that you know they were not the one all along there's still this level of care that they have for them there's still these level of feelings that they have and like i hope you find that somebody who will do the things that apparently i could not do for you even though I wanted to be the person who could do those things for you. I tried to be the person who could do those things for you, but I'm not the person who could do those things for you. So I hope that you find somebody. And whether or not that hope, like in the song was written in a way that's supposed to be like serious, like, yes, I actually really do hope that you find this, or if it's supposed to be like sarcastic and passive aggressive, like, well, I hope you find it, whatever, you know, clearly whatever. So I hope you find whatever you're looking for. Like whatever way it's supposed to be meant, I feel like it can be interpreted in either, you know, direction. Um, like just lyrically, I, I just find it very, very relatable. Um, I don't know if it was around the time that this came. Well, yeah, no, because I remember the concert tickets were purchased around for somebody. Um, well, yes, obviously for me, but somebody. Yeah. Long story, other things. Uh, but yes, the song was very relatable to me in a sense at that time, um, that time period. So, yeah, it's just very, it's just a very well written song. Um, lots of metaphors, um, you know, will just be a, a place on your passport that you travel to sometimes, but I hope you find whatever it is that you're looking for. Like, yeah, sometimes you might look back and, you know, think about us, think about the relationship that we had and whatnot. Clearly, we weren't meant to be forever. Um, we were just a moment in time, and you can look back on your passport and see us, but, you know, I hope you find whatever you're looking for. I hope you find that person to take your crooked-ass roads and turn them into their streets. Um, you know, you had your red flags up and raised, like, anybody on the outside could have seen these red flags and you know in hindsight yes now i see all the red flags you had waving but you know love is blind and we we, we miss all this kind of stuff he had more traffic than east l.a like look like there's just so much gold in these lyrics that i'm just like oh, it's such a well-written song so i love her vocals on it she kept it pretty similar to the original for the most part there were some subtle melodic changes some little things she added here and there that just made it beautiful and original and i love i just love the take on it all these years later um and like there are certain like key kelly clarkson body language things that you can tell when she's singing a song just to like she's just covering the song because she loves the song or when like she's 
kind of semi sort of emotionally invested. And one thing is like whenever she's like holding the mic stand like this, and like she's kind of got her head cocked to the side, and she's just like, she's not really looking at the camera, she's looking elsewhere. And that was happening a lot in here where she just had the mic, she's holding the mic stand with her hands and she's just got her head and she's just kind of like singing up and out and just like, I'm like, okay. Maybe she's still, there's still some stuff lingering from the divorce. Maybe this is dedicated to Brandon. Maybe this is just her channeling something else. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? But I felt like she was invested in this song. I felt like she was emotionally invested in this song. Um, and like I said, I, it's always been a very relatable track for me. So I love, love, love that we finally got a live performance of it. <sighs> All right. So as you guys know, at the end of every one of these karaoke segments, we, or karaoke reactions, we gotta rank what we just watched. Um, we, a lot of great stuff, but if I had to rank them from my least favorite to my favorite, um, in fourth place, I'd probably put um, Don't Dream It's Over. Um, again, there was nothing bad about it. It was a good, solid, competent cover, but there were just amazing other things in this reaction session. Then I'd put Adia, followed by crazy and then someone just because i'm a little bit biased and someone is just i love this song i'm biased um but you know i could interchangeably you know swap crazy and someone and be happy with that list too but yeah let me know what your rankings are down in the comment section i hope you guys enjoyed this reaction if you did don't forget to like comment subscribe share turn on notifications so be notified when all of my shenanigans get posted if there's anything else you'd like me to react to be sure to leave it down in the comments and i'll get to it as soon as i possibly can if you'd like to support the channel in other ways you're more than welcome to join us over on patreon you don't have to but you're more than welcome to if you want to and i'll see you guys in my next video love you And before you guys go, a shout out to my amazing patrons. I can't begin to express how thankful I am for your support. And if you guys would like to join us over on Patreon, the link is down in the description. I love you guys.